Um, tonight, you'll be briefed by NTSB Chairman Robert L. Sumwalt, S-U-M-W-A-L-T. Uh, the investigator in charge is Dr. Dan Bauer, <laughs> B-O-W-E-R. Uh, he is a senior aviation safety investigator in the uh, in the major investigations division of the NTSB. Chairman Sumwalt will provide an update uh, of the factual information that has been developed at this early stage of the investigation. He will then take your questions. Um, to ask questions, use the raise your hand feature. This is at the top of the uh, at the top of the page. It's a little uh, smiley face with a hand. If you mouse over it, the hand will drop off. Handle drop down and select that, and then Chairman Sumwalt will call on you. Uh, the entire briefing, including the Q&A, will be recorded and it will be posted on our YouTube channel, NTSB Gov, uh, later today. Um, please turn off your cameras. If your camera is on, please uh, leave your camera off and mute your mic until Chairman someone calls on you uh, during the Q&A session. Uh, I will let attendees know when we have time for two questions. Uh, one question, and then we will uh, go ahead and end the uh, Q&A. And with that, I will turn it over to Chairman Sumwalt. Peter, thank you very much, and good evening. Thank you for joining. As Peter said, I'm Robert Sumwalt. I'm chairman of the NTSB, and joining us this evening is Dr. Dan Bauer, who is the investigator in charge for this accident. This evening, we wanted to provide you with an investigative update into the event involving United Flight 328, which is a Boeing 777-200 that occurred this past Saturday. Uh, the information that I'm about to share with you is preliminary. It's based on the flight data recorder and an, an initial look at the FDR, which has over 1,000 parameters. It's based on what we've heard from the cockpit voice recorder and also based on preliminary on-site examination of the engine and airframe components. As you all know, at approximately 1.40 Mountain Standard Time on Saturday, February the 20th, United Flight 328 departed runway 25 at Denver International Airport, destined for Honolulu. There were 229 passengers and 10 crew members on board. The aircraft had initially been cleared by air traffic control to 23,000 feet, but approximately four minutes after takeoff, as the airplane was passing through about 12,500 feet above sea level, at an airspeed of about 280 knots, a loud bang was heard on the cockpit voice recorder and increased vibrations were recorded from the number two engine. Now, after the loud bang was heard, the crew began completing checklists. They declared an emergency with air traffic control and they stated their intentions to return back to Denver. And the airplane did make a safe single engine landing about 20 minutes after the engine failure. After the airplane came to a stop, the crew determined that an immediate evacuation was not necessary and the airport fire and rescue personnel responded shortly thereafter. Now, as far as the NTSB's response is concerned, uh, four investigators from the Denver's regional office, NTSB's regional office, responded immediately, and they were secured to the air. They they secured. Uh, I'm not sure what that is in the background, Peter. Can we yep. ab abolish that? Yep. Well, anyway. Um, the investigators from the NTSB's Denver office responded immediately. They secured the airplane in a hangar, in a United hangar, and they've worked with local law enforcement officials as well as local residents to locate and recover debris that fell from the aircraft. They also secured the cockpit voice recorder and the flight data recorder, which were shipped to the NTSB's laboratories in Washington, D.C. Uh, yesterday, on Sunday, the day after the event, the investigator in charge and a power plant specialist arrived from Washington. They arrived in Denver from Washington. So in addition to examining the engine and airframe, our investigators are laying out parts on the hangar floor to closely examine the fractures. This engine, 
which is a Pratt and Whitney 4077 model 4077, Pratt and Whitney 4077 has 22 fan blades. Now the fan section is of course at the beginning at the forward part of the engine. These 22 fan blades join into a hub. And the fan blades are what, if you were to look immediately into the front of the engine, those are the blades that you would see just standing on the ground looking into the engine. All of these connect into the hub. Two fan blades were found fractured. One fan blade fractured at the root, which is where it joins into the hub, and the other, the other adjacent blade, was fractured at about mid-span. Now, one of the fan blades was found embedded in the engine containment ring at about the one o'clock position of the engine, if you were to look into it from the front. Another small piece of the um, of a fan blade was recovered on a soccer field in Bloomfield, Connecticut. Now, regarding the fan blade that was fractured at the root, a preliminary on-scene exam indicates damage consistent with metal fatigue. Now this, pe this piece is being flown on a private jet tonight to Pratt & Whitney's headquarters or Pratt & Whit Whitney's uh, laboratory where it will be examined tomorrow under the, under the supervision of NTSB investigators. For the fan blade that was fractured mid-span, the damage with it is consistent with it being struck when the other fan blade, when the fan blade separating at the root, banged into it. So we would call that overstress or overload damage. Basically, it probably got hit as the other piece was separating. Now, there was minor damage to the aircraft body. Uh, at one place was at the wing to body fairing. Now, where the wing joins the body, of the airplane underneath the wing, there's a composite fairing that sort of smooths it out and makes it more aerodynamic. And that piece was damaged. And there were also dings and, and nicks in other places on the wing, but there was no structural damage. We did have a chance to document the, uh, the cockpit and the examination of the cockpit uh, indicated that the fire handle for the number two engine had been activated and that both bot fire bottles had been discharged. Our investigators uh, conducted uh, interviews today with the crew and looking ahead, mm -hmm. the engine will be removed and torn down. Maintenance records group will be formed to examine the maintenance history of the engine and the airframe. In Washington, we'll be doing an analysis of the cockpit voice recorder and, of course, the, the flight data recorder download and analysis from it. Uh, our mission is to understand not only what happened, but why it happened so that we can keep it from happening again. Uh, since we are just at the beginning stage of the investigations, we don't have a great deal of information to report. However, we will keep you posted by providing updates as we learn more. And Peter will be tweeting out or sending out a link on this chat, which has several photos um, of the aircraft as it sits in the hangar. Uh, one final comment, I'd like to take a moment to thank all of the first responders, as well as the community of Broomfield and the surrounding areas who have helped us to locate and recover aircraft components that rain from the sky. So I will um, take questions and probably the easiest way to do it is uh, I'll just look and see who's raised their hand. Uh, when you do raise your hand, uh, turn on your mic, turn on your, um, your, um, your camera, and I'll try and answer your question. So we've got one right here from the Wall Street Journal. Uh, let me uh, exit out of this thing. And uh, let's see here. Okay, Andrew, hello from the Wall Street. Go right ahead, please. Still muted, Andrew. Sorry about that. Can you hear me now? I certainly can. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Um, could you please uh, tell us uh, whether or not this particular engine uh, had been inspected pursuant to the 2018 FAA AD following uh, an earlier incident uh, involving engine failure on a United flight? And when that inspection happened and what that inspection 
showed? Yeah, that's a great question. Was this engine inspected? Uh, was it uh, inspected uh, uh, in accordance with a prior um, AD that may may have come out on this engine? Is that basically correct? Uh, yes. Um, yeah, thanks. Uh, I want to emphasize that part of our maintenance group, uh, that's exactly what we intend to do, is look at and examine carefully to see what inspections have been conducted of this engine. Is there a follow up on that, Andrew? Um, well, uh, so what kind of inspections um, uh, should have happened uh, in your view after the December uh, incident uh, involving a, a, a JAL flight um, that experienced engine failure too? Um, should that have been uh, a red flag for regulators uh, in the US and elsewhere? Uh, to well, step up in inspections then? Yeah, I think that's certainly part of our investigation, to, as they say, to find out who knew what when. And um, and so we'll be looking at that to see um, what could have been done, what should have been done, if anything at all. Thank you for your question. Jaden Jefferson, Jefferson Jaden, uh, you're next. Yeah, so my question is, Mr. Chairman, is there any responsibility on the airline's part at this time? Is that is there any consideration as to what their role may have been uh, or was there any negligence behind this uh, this really uh, this this accident that happened? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank who, you. And who, are, who are you with? Yeah. You know, what are you with? Yes, I'm a freelance journalist. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and if you turn down your speaker or turn off your mic at this point, because I'm getting feedback. So the answer to that is uh, we are uh, in the business of determining probable cause. We do not determine liability. We want to find out what happened so that we can issue recommendations to keep it from happening again. Thank you. Jamie Freed uh, with Reuters. Hi, um, I was just wondering if you'd spoken to Japanese investigators already about the JAL incident and whether there were any preliminary signs that there were similar problems. The question is, and you're a little bit weak there, but the question is, have we spoken to uh, to J Japanese, uh, our counterparts in Japan to see what uh, actions are going on there? Uh, I'm not aware of that right now, but I want to point out that our investigation is really just getting underway. Uh, we will do a very comprehensive investigation to uh, to look at everything. Thank you for your question. So, um, Alan Levin with uh, Bloomberg. Hi, uh, Mr. Chairman. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. I can. Thank you. Uh, so uh, you described uh, the in detail the damage to the uh, aircraft. Um, and, and of course, we've seen pictures of the engine, but can you describe damage to the engine? And in particular, uh, you said a, a piece was lodged in the containment vessel, but did anything pierce the containment vessel? Or was the damage confined to that uh, nacelle cowl area? Yeah, the question is, is that uh, did anything pierce the containment, um, containment ring? And at this time, uh, it does not appear that anything punctured through the containment ring. David Shepperson. Uh, thanks, Mr. Chairman. Can you see me? Can you hear me? I, I can see you and hear you. Thanks. I know it's early, but is it, um, do you have any preliminary indications whether the fatigue uh, to the to the fan blade that you recovered in, or what appears to be uh, fatigue, is consistent with the fatigue in the 2018 777 uh, investigation? In, uh, right, in right. Great question. So the question is, is there any consistency between the two? I think what's important is that we really truly understand the facts, circumstances, and conditions around this one, around this particular event, before we can compare it to uh, any other events. But certainly, we will want to know if there's a similarity. And for Jeff, um, for Jaden, Jamie, and Alan, if you don't have any other questions, you can lower your hand. David, did you have a follow-up? And just just briefly, again, I know it's early, but given what you know so far, as you probably know, the FAA has already announced it's going to uh, call for stepped up inspections. You know, we're shrinking that interval between inspections. Is, is that something that you've already seen or recommended in, at, at this early stage? We, we, we have not recommended that formally. 
uh, as you pointed out, the uh, United Airlines has grounded uh, all of the um, affected in, uh, airplanes with these engines. And it's my understanding that the FAA is also working uh, very quickly, as well as um, Pratt & Whitney has uh, reiterated or revised a uh, service bulletin. So it uh, looks like action is being taken. And um, so that's uh, that's what's happening there. OK, I'm going down the list. Um, I don't see. I don't see any other questions, but I'm looking down the list here. OK, so. Let me look. OK, there we go. We got some more. Thomas, Thomas. Peppert, Pipert. Piper, thank you, with the Associated Press. Um, yeah. can, can you shed some light on uh, why the cowling broke away from the plane and, and why the engine remained on fire um, even after the power was cut? Yeah, the, um, why did the cowling separate? Certainly, uh, we don't expect a cowling to separate like that. We want to understand that. In a completely unrelated uh, uh, event, we did try to understand, and we did understand why a cowling separated uh, with another type airplane, with another type engine, and we certainly want to understand uh, what caused that cowling to separate in this case. Now, as far as the fire, uh, we do have indications that the fuel to the uh, engine was turned off, so we will be looking to see exactly what may have uh, continued to propagate a fire. Um, OK, so the only hands that I so sh show raised are Dave, David Shepherson, Alan Levin, and now there's Andrew from the Wall Street again. So we'll just and uh, tell you what, Sam Sweeney with ABC. Go ahead with you and then we'll uh, go back. Sam? Sure, Mr. Chairman, can you describe the hole in the underneath the wing area that m local media is now broadcasting uh, in Denver? You, it was described as minor damage to the body, but this looks like a significant hole in the side of the plane. It's a uh, it's a it's a basically a fiberglass piece. It's a composite piece. So, um, you know, it could be fairly easily punctured. You couldn't go up and sock it with your fist, but a piece of metal flying at a high speed would could puncture it. So um, it, it is not structural in nature. And I believe that's one of the pictures that uh, Peter will be sending out a link to. So you'll be able to examine it yourself. OK, KDVR streaming guest, uh, you're up next. Um, didn't hear that, but maybe you don't, didn't have a question anymore. OK, for follow ups. Oh. Yeah, go ahead. Um, can I ask a question? Hi, it's Leslie from CNBC, and I'm sorry if I missed this earlier, but do you, did you say when if you knew the last time this engine was inspected um, and the fan blades were inspected um, and whether that work was done by Pratt and Whitney itself? Yeah, uh, we, we have, I have not stated that, and that's part of the maintenance review. Um, as you know, we're just getting started. We wanted to come out and collect the perishable evidence. That's the information that goes away with the passage of time. The maintenance record group will be formed quickly. We will be going through that, but we're going to um, we're going to be very deliberate about going through the inspections through all the maintenance records. Okay. Um, okay. okay. Do you know how many cycles were on the engine? I personally that don't. That, there again, that will be one of the things that we will find out by going through the records. Uh, let's see. Other questions? It Thank looks you. like, uh, yeah, you're welcome, Leslie. How about Tom Thomas uh, Piper again? Oh, no, I'm not sure why I showed up again. I didn't have him. Okay. Well, if you can, lower your hand. Andrew from the Wall Street, do you have a, another question? Uh, I guess, Mr. Chairman, uh, follow up on the question about the uh, damage to the fairing. Uh, how how close uh, did that damage come to uh, uh, hitting critical airplane systems or um, possibly the pressurized uh, part of the cabin? It's a good question, and I'm not in a position to, to say because I've not personally seen it. I've seen a, a photograph of it, so I, I don't know. OK, uh, I think it's time for. Two more questions and Mr. Um, Mr. Chairman uh, Ian Duncan from The Washington Post has a question. Ian, you can yeah. unmute yourself. Thank you, Ian. 
Uh, sorry, I don't know if I was not showing up. Um, I just wanted to see if you expect to look at the engine failure on the um, 2016 uh, Korean Airlines flying the same kind of engine, if that is going to be part of the investigation. Yeah, Ian, I'm sorry, you're a little bit muffled there, but uh, you're asking if the Korean Airlines event would be part of our investigation. And yes, we will. We want to understand uh, if there's any relation between this event and the other events that have happened across the globe. Okay, any other questions, Peter, that you can uh, see? Yeah, I thought, was Tom, Tom Costello, was your hand up? Did you have a question, Tom? Hi, yeah, can you hear me okay, Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir, I can, Tom. So just a, a one quick thing, as a displaced Coloradan, uh, you mentioned that the, uh, I would only bring this up because you mentioned that the piece was found in Bloomberry, Connecticut, but I think you meant, <laughs> I think you meant to say Colorado, and right, and that would have uh, not been in Connecticut where the piece was found. Uh, thank you for correcting that. Um, I was wondering if I would uh, get through <laughs> that. I wrote down CO, which would be Colorado, <laughs> but somehow or another I said That's Connecticut. Right. Pratt and sure you, is, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure you meant Broomfield, Colorado. Um, a quick question, though. You, you did mention that there were preliminary indications of damage consistent with metal fatigue. Can you explain specifically what you saw or what, I realize not you, what specifically is consistent or suggests metal fatigue? Can you be descriptive there, please? Yes. And so in metal fatigue, you're usually going to find what I will describe as beach marks. Uh, it will be a series of, of marks uh, that you can vi visibly see um, or that you can see oftentimes with the naked eye that are just, uh, just marks. And each of those marks, uh, once you put it under like a scanning electron microscope, uh, you can actually count the number of cycles since the initiation of that fatigue. And so we can actually see uh, what I'll I'll call the crack arrest marks, which are these these beach marks. It's like if the ocean comes in and goes back out, you're going to see a, a mark where the ocean where the ocean was. And then when the tide goes out, you, you know, so it's going to be marks like that, Tom. And that's that's what we mean when we mean that a a preliminary on-site exam uh, would be consistent with metal fatigue. Any way to tell how long that metal fatigue had been propagating, how old it may have been? Yes, uh, but we can't do it on site. It has to be done in our laboratory where we can actually measure and count the number of, of crack arrest marks. And that is an indication how e each time that engine is under experiences one cycle, there'll be one more of those crack arrest marks, of those, those beach marks. So yes, we can come up with a pretty accurate, um, a pretty accurate number of, how, of when that uh, crack, that fatigue crack uh, was initiated. Thank you. Yes, okay, um, one so, more question. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, looks like Thomas uh, Pipert, Pipert has a question, you can unmute yourself. No, I don't. I, I lowered yeah. I lowered my hand. Yeah. Okay. Oh, my apologies. Does is there is there any other? Uh, let's take. We have time for one more question. Can, can, can I it? jump in? Is that our, Mr. Mr. Chairman? Yeah. Yeah, Dave. Dave, go ahead. Super quick because I remember this was an issue early on in uh, in Southwest 1380. Have you determined yet whether this was an uncontained engine failure? Have we determined whether or not it's an, uh, it's an uncontained engine failure? Uh, now, we by our strictest definition, do not consider this to be an uncontained engine failure because the containment ring contained the parts as they were flying out. Now, from a practical point of view, from the flying public, it, it really doesn't matter, um, you know, whether or not we technically call it that or not. But at this point, uh, we are saying that it was not an uncontained engine failure. So I just wanted to check my notes here, Dave, um, just to see what I what I may want to add to that. Um, you know, it, it doesn't change anything as to whether or not it was uncontained or not. I mean, it was still an event that uh, that we don't like to see, um, and so I'll just leave it at that. I want to thank you all. Now, Peter, are you going to send out a blast for the link to our Flickr account? 
Yeah, we'll go ahead. Uh, and Chris, did you already sent out, uh, put some photos in the chat, correct? Yes, Mr. Chairman and everyone on the call, uh, we have a photo album in our Flickr account. There are several photos in there documenting both damage on the aircraft and the work of our engineers in the NTSB lab as they uh, um, audition the cockpit voice recorder and download from the flight data recorder. Uh, there was a link put into the chat or you can go to our Twitter account and I'll take you right to our Flickr uh, photo album for this event. Uh, I'm sorry, Chairman, you have any further remarks? Peter, I'll let you wrap it up. I know you're going to get a plug in there for follow us and uh, on Twitter and, and all of that. So I'll let you uh, handle that. But I want to again thank everybody for uh, for joining us and we will do our best to keep you updated as we learn uh, pertinent information. Peter, back to you. Yeah, thank you, uh, Chairman Sumwalt. Uh, yeah, any follow-up questions should be directed to uh, use this, this email address, NTSB Media Relations, all together, no spaces, NTSB Media Relations at NTSB.gov. Uh, our phone number is 202-314-6100. That will go to a recording and uh, Someone will get back to you when possible. Uh, again, follow us on Twitter for any other updates that we have regarding this or any other event that we're investigating, and that's going to be NTSB underscore newsroom. So I want to thank you for your attention, and good night.